anyone have a favorite they'd like us to say? Yes. Two o five. Gleams of the Golden Morning, hymn number two o five. Opening hymn will be hymn number 198. And can it be?
Thank you for singing. You may be seated. Good morning and happy Sabbath. Um, <laughs> I want to welcome each one of you. And, you know, the Sabbath is a, a very special day. And I'm going to read you a quote that tells you why. And this is actually one of my favorite quotes. And every Sabbath, I always look forward to the Sabbath because of this quote. It's taken from um, Desire of Ages, page 207. And it says, the demands upon God are even greater upon the Sabbath day than upon other days. His people then leave their usual employment and spend time in meditation and worship. They ask more favors on him on the Sabbath day than upon other days. They demand his special attention. They crave his choices, blessings. And this is my favorite part. It says, God does not wait for the Sabbath to pass before he grant these requests. And it's very powerful. And you know what? I actually tried this quote. And I find from time and time again, God always grant those requests. And it continues, it says, heaven works never cease, and man should never rest from doing good. The Sabbath is not intended to be a period of useless inactivity. The law forbids secular labor on the rest day of the Lord. The toils, the grain, and livelihood must cease. No labor from worldly pleasure or profit is lawful upon that day, but God but as God sees his labor of creating and rested upon the seventh day and blessed it, so man is to leave the occupation of daily life and devote those sacred hours to healthful rest, to worship, and to holy deeds. The work of Christ in healing the sick was perfect according to the law. It honors the Sabbath. So it really shows you how, you know, God, he uses the Sabbath day as a, a special way to really bless and he wants us to demand more things upon him on that day. So I pray as we go throughout this Sabbath day that we would give God all our cares, our burdens, and trust that he is doing what he promised he would do. And so at this time, if, if possible, I would like you all to kneel with me so we could pray. Our Father in heaven, Lord, we're so grateful that you have set aside a day for us where we could come and rest in you. And Lord, I pray as we start this service, Lord, that your Holy Spirit will speak to our hearts and minds and that we may gain a rich blessing from you today. And that everything that is done today, all the testimonies that will be shared today, will bring honor and glory to your name and draw us nearer than ever before to you. Please bless this service and guide us, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray and ask. Amen. <clears throat> so the scripture reading that we have today is taken from Romans chapter 15. That's Romans 15 and verse 13. And it reads, Now the God of hope Filled, now the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that ye may abound in hope through the power of the Holy Ghost. And that's just a powerful blessing that we could hold on and count on God for. And um, at this time, we'll have Lessity, who's going to be sharing a testimony with us. Good morning and happy Sabbath, everyone. Um, before I share my testimony, I am going to be reading from Psalm chapter 91, and I will read verse 4 and verse 11. And verse 4 reads, He shall cover you with his feathers, and under his wings you shall take refuge. His truth shall be your shield and buckler. 
And verse 11 says, For he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. They, in their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. And that was verse 12. Uh, so the testimony that I'm going to give happened recently on Sunday. Uh, we had a health expo, a children's health expo in Trenton. And on our way to the health expo, we were almost uh, hit by another car. And um, I, I, I speak for myself, it's like everything slowed down <laughs> and you had the time to process the car that was moving so fast, you actually saw, saw it moving towards you but in slow motion and like <laughs> I grabbed onto my bag like it could do something for me but it really couldn't do anything and it was just by the mercies of God that we were not hit by the car and um, we were very exposed and very prone to um, having a serious accident because we were turning at a T junction and the car was coming this way so um, it was only God and his angels that were protecting us, that we went and were able to go ahead with the health expo. And also, um, it was a cloudy day, <laughs> and it started raining, and we had uh, a few prayers, like praying, God, can you please hold back the rains? Um, because this, we're holding this expo for the children in the community, and it's not for our own glory, but we want to reach out to the children and also to reach out to their families. So um, at some point, I kind of got a bit discouraged because it started raining heavily, and then it stopped, and then you'd be happy that, oh, it stopped raining, and then the clouds would come back and it start raining again, and you're just praying that, Lord, despite the rain, can the children please stay, and may you give us the enthusiasm so that we're able to carry out with the expo as well and by the grace of God it was a successful expo and um, we had uh, positive feedback from the people in the community and it was so touching because when we were leaving like the children didn't want us to leave and um, myself Kathleen and Becky were one of the last people to go in the van because it was like we wanted to stay they wanted us to stay but we had to go so it was a blessed experience all in all the fact that um, God was able to, to, to protect us and to prevent a serious accident from happening and also hold back the reins and keep the children there to stay for the expo and to listen to what we had to share with them. And also for us, for using us as tools to impact these children, children's lives. And by the grace of God, we pray that a seed was planted and that they will share with their families what we shared with them. Amen. So at this time, we have Anna, who's going to be um, sharing a special feature with us. I really enjoyed Blessedy's uh, testimony. Um, I think it's so nice when outreach is something that doesn't just touch other people, it touches us as well. And this is going to be a little bit of what we're going to tell you in the afternoon in our mission report just a little bit more of advertisement <laughs> for you to come and be with us. Um, as I was looking for a special feature to share with my brothers and sisters, um, I came across a video that impacted me a lot. Uh, you know how God, he has object lessons hidden in our daily life for us. And recently, there's one of our brothers who is um, widely known by, by us Adventists, who went through something that was a little bit shocking, but at the same time, he took something out of it. And it reminds me of this passage of Isaiah 25, verse 9, if you could join me. And Isaiah 25, verse 9, and... Mm -hmm. um, and then I, I can share with you another verse that recently the Lord has showed me has been a great encouragement. Um, and But let's first go to Isaiah 25, verse 9. It says, And it shall be, and it shall be said in that day, Lo, this is our God. We have waited for him, and he will save us. This is the Lord. We have waited for him. We will be glad and rejoice in his salvation. 
another verse that has been an encouragement to me as I, I was sharing with you is in Joel, the book of Joel, and is ver, um, chapter 2, Joel 2, chapter 2, verse 32. If you could join me, Joel 2, 32, and it says, And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be delivered. For in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem shall be deliverance, as the Lord had said, and in the remnant whom the Lord shall call. And the short video we are going to watch is called The Evacuation. On the island, we do it It was an amazing day. My wife and I had taken some of our visiting mainland friends to explore the east side of our beautiful island home. We started our morning at the beach, whale watching and swimming, and we ended our day with a spectacular mountain hike up the Pali. We stopped and got shave ice along the way. The food was great, the fellowship was sweet, the day was so relaxing, and it ended in a most beautiful sunset. I went to bed tired and satisfied, looking forward to a good night's rest, excited for another adventure, this time on the west side. Nothing was out of the ordinary. I expected to wake up as usual to another beautiful Hawaiian day. I had no idea what was coming. At three o'clock that morning, I was rudely awakened by a terrifying scream. There was a loud pounding on my door. The house next door was on fire. And when I rushed out of the house, I was brought face to face with a blazing inferno. It was already as high as our two-story home and it began to reach over our walls. I did my best to protect our home, but my puny garden hose did absolutely nothing. It was good enough to water my mango tree, but it was powerless over this angry conflagration. Five minutes later, and the fire had broken our windows and was spreading in our family home, the home that my beloved grandfather built from the foundation up with his own hands. Had we slept just five minutes longer, perhaps I wouldn't be here to tell the story. I didn't have any time to gather any of my possessions. I only had time to wake up my wife, throw on a shirt and get out. And thank God we all got out. It was a crazy experience. One of the many lessons I learned from this ordeal is that we need to live our lives to the fullest and to live each day as though it's our last and to be ready always to meet death in peace. I've also learned that time flies in a crisis hour. You see, just as I only had a few moments to escape the fiery destruction of our home, so too we in this world only have a little bit of time to prepare for the final destruction of planet Earth. The Bible says that the world is passing away and the lust of it, but he that does God's will will abide forever. But unfortunately, many are indifferent to the crisis hour we're in. Many are sleeping in carnal security, thinking that they're going to wake up to business as usual. Many are indifferent to the signs of alarm going off all around us. Economic instability, political corruption, moral decay, international unrest, terrorism, and natural disasters increasing in intensity and frequency. All of these are signs that the end is very near. And in these final moments of this earth's history, Jesus is pounding at the door of our hearts. He's trying to wake us up from spiritual sleepiness, and He's pleading with us to get ready for evacuation. You see, friends, we don't have time to be storing up our treasures in a world that will soon be destroyed. We don't have time to waste upon the trivial things of life, things that make no difference in light of eternity. Right now is evacuation time. It is a high time for us to awake out of sleep, for now is our salvation nearer than when we believed. It is time for us to seek the Lord with all our hearts, time to pray like we've never prayed before, time to gather our loved ones at the altar of sacrifice, time to give our hearts to the only one that can save us when this whole world is on fire. You see, just as I only had time to wake up my wife, put on my shirt and get out of the house, so too we only have time to gather our loved ones and put on the robe of Christ's righteousness and get ready to leave this world of sin. And so today I encourage you 
to use the last few precious moments in this world to do the most important things in life. Hug your children, kiss your wife, spend time with your family, get rid of all the non-essentials, and most importantly, let God cover you with the fireproof robe of His righteousness. For it is only the righteousness of Christ that will last for time and for all eternity. We only have time to pray together, our loved ones, to give our heart fully. Amen? Amen. That was a powerful message, don't you think? I think it was a very powerful message, a very interesting object lesson. Uh, and still in the topic of giving our, our heart totally to God, we will have now um, a special moment for the ones who had birthday in August, which I think that they didn't come at this time. I think they're not here, the ones we have on our list. Is there anyone here that had birthday in August? Is there anyone here? Yes, at least one. <laughs> at least one of the people who had birthday is here. So we have for our uh, birthday... Uh, let's say babies, not babies, but for our birthday brothers and sisters, we have a special moment. And I'm going to ask Kath, uh, Kathleen to come here um, as she will set up her guitar and all the cables and everything. Maybe you, you need this chair? Yeah? Yeah? Oh, okay. All right. So um, as we wait a little bit for... For Marcella, I think you are the only one who has birthday on August that is present here, <laughs> that is here today. We had some more in our list, but um, so we would like to offer something uh, to you. Yes, if you could um, enjoy this special moment. And this uh, special music is about uh, a psalm, Psalm 139, which... I say that usually Psalm 139 is the psalm for those who have birthdays. And if you'll read it, you, you will see why. And I'll just let us give attention now to Kathleen as she shares with us a special moment. So as Anna has said, this song is especially, especially based on the Bible verse, Psalms 139, verse 14. And it says, I will praise you for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Um, oh my. Marvelous are thy works in that my soul knoweth right well.
watch carefully my love would finish forming you into who you are i won't let you go i'm here with you always i'll watch you grow strong because i know you're fearful That was so beautiful. Thank you, Kathleen, for sharing with us that music. Um, I have one more little gift for you. <laughs> I have here a birthday card. And um, when the pastor will pray, I'll ask him to pray also for you as a, a special prayer for your uh, one more year of life for you and your family. Uh, we will divide now. Um, in classes and uh, we're gonna have if I if I would like to ask for those teachers who are teaching today if they could stand up so that we know where are the classes we have I have one two oh Yemen okay three <laughs> okay so I assume that we're gonna have uh, brother Hightower in the overflow room uh, with Spirit of Prophecy, we're going to have Pastor Herschel in the back with the youth. I'm going to have Yemen here in the main room on this side. If those who are here, if they could, for camera purposes, if they could at least come to this aisle and maybe more towards the front, if possible, we would appreciate. Um, and I'm going to ask, I'm going to give the mic to Pastor Herschel and ask if he could please pray for the lesson and also for Marcella and for blessings for her and for her family in this new year of life for her. Shall we bow our heads? Thank you, Father, for the Sabbath. Thank you for the testimonies we've heard and for uh, the experience in Hawaii that strengthens our faith as well. We say a special prayer, Lord, for our sister Marcella. You've blessed her through these years. May we continue to bless her and her family with much health and much faith in these last days. And please bless our Sabbath school, Lord and the classes, and help us, Father, to be filled with the Spirit, each one of us, and endure to the end, is my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. So we will be back at 1045, and when we are back, we ask that please we can keep reverence here in the main room. Thank you.